Well howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to tie a blood knot. Now a blood knot is, seems to be one of the most challenging uh, for people learning how to uh, tie basic knots for fly fishing. Uh, but there's a couple tricks I think I can show you today that'll make it a lot easier. And a blood knot is by far the best option when you're attaching uh, unlike materials or anything basically the way I like to describe it is anything bigger than 0x, so anything 12 thousandths or heavier, you're going to want to use a blood knot. And for those of you that know us or you've studied with us before, you know that we're huge proponents of building our own leaders and uh, making our own stuff. In fact, uh, I've got a new book on the way out, which we're certainly going to tell you all about here on YouTube, but it's all about uh, making your own leaders. And of course, we're going to talk about tying the proper knots. But I wanted to take the time today and show you how to tie a blood knot, okay? Um, and I've got a couple of pieces of fly line here uh, so that you can see uh, the different colors and, and see how I do this. Uh, but one of the tricks, uh, certainly somewhere along the line we've shown you a clinch knot, or you probably already know a clinch knot. Uh, but the best way to think of a blood knot is it's two clinch knots that are jammed together. Okay, so you're basically tying two clinch knots, and if you can visualize that, it's going to help you a lot in tying the blood knot. But uh, actually, a couple of tricks that you can employ when tying a basic blood knot, and these are tricks that, uh, um, that Lefty Cray showed me a number of years ago, 1998-99, when he was here at Mad River Outfitters. Um, and uh, th so this comes straight from Lefty. But anyways, one of the tricks is make sure you leave yourself plenty of tag in. This is true with tying almost any knot. But make sure you leave plenty of tag in here. In fact, I probably don't even have enough. Leave yourself plenty there. And then I'm going to cross the two pieces of monofilament that I'm trying to tie together. I'm going to cross those and I'm going to form an X. And I'm going to pinch that X in between my thumb and my index finger. Okay. And now, <clears throat> one of the secrets is that if, if you just take, uh, say, this yellow piece here, and you start wrapping your five turns, you're going to notice that the original loop that you need to bring this back through is very small and hard to find. Okay, And that's one of the problems that a lot of people experience with the blood knot. So I can correct that by doing this one little trick. I can open up this angle, okay? So I, I kind of move that back. So now instead of a 90 degree angle here like a regular X has, I've opened this up, just call it 120 degrees. And now I kind of pinch again in place like that. So now when I fold this yellow piece over and start my wraps, you'll see that that loop stays nice and big. I'm gonna come around five times like I do with the clinch knot and then I come back up and through that loop. Now, here's kind of the finger gymnastics part. I'm gonna grab onto that with my ring and my middle finger of my left hand, and now with my right hand, I'm gonna pull this piece so that everything's straight, okay? Now, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna switch hands, and this is now, so I hold that entire clinch knot in place okay and that's my new X now I'm going to take the orange and I'm going to repeat the process but I'm going to open that angle again so that that loop stays nice and big I'm going to come around five times again visualize the clinch knot here come around five times and this time you're going to come down and through that loop now I have to grab onto that and what I do is take my middle finger and I kind of pinch it against my thumb, and now you're going to pull this piece so that it's straight. Reach up and grab the yellow and the orange, the tag ends, and now, once it's kind of in place, you're just going to tighten it down, always moisten it, which I'm not going to do with this fly line, um, and there you have a blood knot. And if this is tied properly, uh, one tag end should be coming out the top, one tag end should be coming out the bottom. Um, 
with the fly line here, it doesn't always seat up just perfectly. Uh, but when you do this with, with monofilament, you'll see, uh, you, you know, you got to practice this knot. It takes a little, little practice, but a couple of those tricks of opening up that original angle, so to speak, so that when you fold it over, that loop stays nice. Come up and through, then you got to grab onto that tag end so it doesn't come springing out, and then pull this piece straight so you've got a perfectly shaped clinch knot there. Switch hands. Open up your loop again, make your clinch knot, come down and through, make sure you hold on to that, pinch it against your, uh, with your middle finger against your thumb so it doesn't come springing out. Tighten it, make sure you hold on to the tag ends as you're tightening until you get to the point where it won't spring out. Moisten the knot, tighten it up, and off you go. Uh, I'm, I guarantee you, you practice this three or four times, um, you're going to become an expert at tying blood knots. It's not that tough, um, and it's by far the best knot uh, for attaching anything 12 thousandths and heavier, a must for tying your own leaders. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe. Click that little bell right next to it so that our videos pop up and you get to see everything that we do here at Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. Take care.